I got a great teaching today on how to personalize and appropriate the promises of God into your life. And um, this is particularly relevant at this time when we see people going through difficult times, hard times. Uh, there's a, a real disconnect sometimes between the promises of God and what we see playing out in our lives. And we need to be able to appropriate the promises that are ours in Christ Jesus. So today we're going to look at how to do that. You know, there are many promises that God has given us. Amazing, wonderful promises because he's a good, kind and loving father. And the question is, how do we take hold of these promises? How do we take hold of the blessings throughout the scriptures? There's blessings given to the people of God. Now, under the old covenant, under the law of Moses, there were blessings and curses. So under the law, uh, the law of Moses, it was like, if you do good, you get good. If you would do, if you do bad, you get bad. If you obey, then you are blessed. If you disobey or you sin, you are cursed. Now, there are, let me just say, we need to be living in a righteous and godly way. So when we when we share about the promises of God and we share about the grace of God, it's not an excuse to sin, but it is just to say that in Christ we are under a different system. And in Christ, it, it says that every promise is yes and amen. So I just want to start the teaching by saying to you, this is going to be life changing for you because it means that we can appropriate every promise, every good promise of God in Christ Jesus and apply it into our lives. And we need that today. And I'm going to look particularly at Psalm 91, how to personalize it and bring it into the presence, the presence of God into the present context of the life we live in. And this is going to be a life changing today because there's some amazing promises in that Psalm 91. And we know that at this time when people are feeling attacked and afflicted, when the enemy is at work through pestilence and disease, through um, poverty and curses, we are not under that. We can come out of that and live a victorious, abundant life that Christ promises. And, and God wants that for us because we're his children. Because he loves us. He's not angry with us. We're not under that old covenant of Moses. We're the offspring of Abraham. And before Moses in the law was a man of faith called Abraham that trusted God, believed in the promises of God. And it was credited to him as righteousness. And it says we are the offspring of Abraham. We are the offspring of the man of faith. So today I want to look at that for you because it has relevance for you personally and for your family. So if you turn to 2 Corinthians 1.20, it says the following. And this is an amazing thing. It says no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes and amen in Christ. Let me read that again. No matter how many promises God has made, they are yes and amen in Christ. If you look at that, it's saying God has actually made so many promises. Over, over thousands of years, God has recorded in his word promises that will one day come into fulfillment. And especially in the old covenant before the cross of Jesus, let me just say that the old covenant applied up to the cross of Jesus Christ. Until Jesus atoned for sins and made us holy, we were people were under the old covenant. But after the cross, there is a new covenant in the blood of Jesus. Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenant. We are in a new agreement. We are in a new relationship with God. Not, as, not a relationship fulfilled by our good works and our efforts and our obedience, but a relationship that is by faith in a good, kind and loving father out of which good works and obedience flows. It's, it's, it's turned, the, old, the new covenant turned, turns the old covenant on its head. So why I'm saying that is because in the new covenant, and, and we, in, in Jesus Christ, we are, if you believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you've given your life to Jesus, you are in a new covenant. And every promise is yes and amen. So it's not yes and no. You see, under the old covenant, it was like, do good, get good, do bad, get bad. It was like, do good and the promises are yes, do bad, sin and the promises are no. But in Jesus, every promise is yes and amen. And because Jesus said, you know, I've not come to do away with the law and the prophets, but to fulfill them. 
Because all the conditions, see the old covenant was conditional on our performance. The new covenant is is fulfilled in Christ. Every condition was met in Christ. That's what Jesus said when, it, when, when he said, I've come to fulfill the law, the righteous requirements of the law. So that for us, it's not about our effort anymore. It's about us not doing. It's about us being in a position of believing and in relationship as children of God to a good, loving and kind God that wants to bless us. As a father, let me tell you, I want to see my children blessed. So, and so much, how much more so God? That's what it says in his word. He says, how much more so, if earthly fathers want to bless their children, how much more so does God want to bless us? And for those of us who believe in Christ, we can appropriate all the promises right now for us. In other words, we have to personalize the promises and we have to appropriate them. In other words, take them on as ours. And we have to contextualize them into the now. It's not a future thing that God wants to do. It's a now thing that he wants us to apply into our life by faith in Jesus Christ because we are part of Jesus. We have become, we gave our lives to Jesus. We've become part of his body and every promise is yes and amen. This is good news. <laughs> this is amazing good news because it means you have to stop at your own efforts and your own qualifications and your own legal law keeping, which we all, it says we all fail at that. So sometimes under the under that old mindset of religion, sometimes we're blessed when we do good. But when when we fall short, when we miss the mark, when we transgress his laws, that's sin, we're cursed. So it's this constant, you know, like how the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Let me just say something. That's an Old Testament concept. Job was under the old covenant. We are in the new covenant. God doesn't give to us and in, with one hand and take away with the other because he's angry with us. Everything is yes and amen. I don't know about you, but I want this in my life. I want every promise I read, the promise of health, the promise of prosperity, the promise of abundant life, the promise of, that my offspring will be blessed, promise that, that I will just move in the power of the Holy Spirit is yes and amen. This is wonderful good news, people. The, the, the law is not good news. The law points out our sin and points out how, sh how we fall short. But the law points to Jesus. The law says you can't do it yourself much as you try. It says in Hebrew, um, sorry, Romans 9 and 10, it says Israel tried to get right by the keeping of the law and their good works and they failed. But what the law does is point us to Jesus and say, when you're in Christ, everything is filled. So we're going to look now. I'm going to say to you, you need to take when you read the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. You need to be careful because it says that the Old Covenant, the law, it says this in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. It says the, the, the law is brings death and condemnation. But we move in the spirit. But what the law, the law, the Old Testament is good when we understand it in the context of Jesus. When we understand it and read it in the context of Christ has fulfilled everything. So now, instead of it being God will, if you, it's God has because Jesus, because of Jesus. Okay, so let me just say that again. When we read the Old Covenant and we read the promises, it's not if you do this or that, God will. It's like because Jesus fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law, God has given you these things. So let me just take Psalm 91. So the Psalm 91 is a is a psalm of deliverance, a psalm of warfare. You see people driving around with the stickers on their car. But let me tell you something. Psalm 91 is no good to you unless you appropriate it in the finished work of the cross. Because Psalm 91, read as it stands in the Old Covenant, is conditional on you doing certain things. It says, if it starts with, if you do this, if you do that. But let me just say, that has been done by Christ. So we need to now personalize it as if every condition is fulfilled in Christ. So what I'd like you to do is, Get hold of Psalm 91, look at it and read it because I've got the version that is now personalized as we should be reading it from the position 
of being in Christ, the position of being in God's grace, unmerited, undeserved favor and empowerment and blessing. So in the new covenant of grace, Psalm 91, every promise becomes yes and amen now for me, fulfilled in Christ. So I'm going to read this to you. I'm going to print this out at the end. If you want a copy of this, you can contact me. So by the way, also at the end, I'm going to, I'm going to post this up so you'll be able to make, take a, a screenshot of it. And I encourage you to pray this over yourselves in Christ. Lord, all these promises are yes and amen. All these promises are mine now today. Not conditional on me doing anything because I did it all. In a sense, when I gave my life to Jesus and I died to myself and was born again in Christ. You see, it was all done for you when you made that decision to believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. To all who believe, and you have to believe, these things are not automatically given. They're given they are given to believers. They are yes and amen in Christ, and you have to come into Christ. So if you don't believe, if you've never given your life to Christ, now's the time. You can get down on your knees and you can say, Jesus, come into my life. I repent of my sins and I want you into my life today. That's as easy as that. It's, it's a prayer, just a prayer of faith. And Jesus will come into your life. If you, if you do that when you're listening to one of my videos, contact me and let me know. But let's move on. Let's move into these amazing promises through this psalm of deliverance. This psalm is very pertinent today, but it's got to be put into the now context and the finished work of the cross. Because it talks about pestilence, it talks about disease and epidemics. It talks about the enemy coming against us. And right now, many people are seeing that. So I'm going to speak, and as I read this, I'm going to appropriate it into the now for myself. I, I take this every promise that's here, Lord, unto myself now in Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. So this is what Psalm 91 says. And you can read, in a sense, the Old Testament version. And then you can listen to my New Testament version in which everything's fulfilled. Psalm 91, starting in verse 1. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High rests in the shadow of the Almighty. See, first of all, we find rest when we are in the shadow of the, of the Almighty. We, we dwell in His shelter in Christ. Verse 2, I say to you, Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I'm trusted. You see, we're putting it now into the, into the truth of Christ in us, our faith now. You have saved me from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence, from plagues, from epidemics. Verse 4, you have covered me. See, it's done at the cross. 2,000 years ago it was done. You have covered me with your feathers. And under your wings I find refuge. There's a picture actually, by the way, of, of like a bird, of a chicken with the chicks under the wings. It's beautiful. It's a, it's a picture actually of the nurturing nature of God. Your faithfulness is my shield and rampart. See, it's not going to be. It is now in Christ. I do not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys. Very pertinent for today with this pandemic going on. See, I don't fear. A thousand may fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but it will not come near me. I will only observe with my eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. I declare the Lord is my refuge. See, declaration is important. Speaking these things out into the spiritual realm are important. I declare, this is what you can do, even as we, as we go through this now. I declare the Lord is my refuge, and I have made the Most High my dwelling place. No harm will overtake me. No disaster will come near my tent. <laughs> Such good news. No harm will overtake me. No disaster will come near my tent, my home. For the Lord has commanded his angels concerning me see not he will he has to, to guard me in my ways they lift me up in their hands so that i do not strike my foot against a stone right now i tread on the lion and the cobra picture of the devil and, and and his demons i trample the great lion and the serpent see we have victory over the devil 
It's right now for us. <laughs> I tread on the lion and the cobra. I trample the great lion and the serpent because I'm a son of God, because I'm in Christ, because Jesus has done everything I need on the cross, because he's given me power and authority. Because you love me, says the Lord, I have rescued you. I protect you because you've acknowledged my name. You see, you acknowledged his name when you gave your life to Jesus. You turned, you responded to God's love. The first love we have was God's love for us. You responded to that love. So God can say, because you love me, because Gary loves me, I've rescued him. Because you acknowledge my name, I protect you. It's not a future event, it's a now event. When you call on me, I answer you, says the Lord. I am with you in trouble. I have delivered you and honored you. See, it's already done. He's already delivered us. He's already honored us when we came into Christ. Because he sees us as his son, righteous, holy, <laughs> and blessed. His children. I satisfy you with long life. And I've shown you my salvation. See, it's a now promise. Gary, I take it unto myself. God says to me, I satisfy you with long life. I've shown you my salvation. You see, this is the way we need to read the promises of the, of the Old Testament. In Deuteronomy 28, under the old Levitical and, and, and a law, under the Deuteronomical law, Deuteronomy 28 is, is a pages of curses and pages of blessings. Okay, there's all these blessings, but sadly, there's all these curses. It says, if you obey me, I will bless you. And if you, if you do not obey me, I will curse you. But that is why Jesus hung on the cross. It says in Galatians 3.13, that he hung on the cross and he became a curse for our sake. He was fulfilling the curses. You see, the curses of the law is taken on Jesus. The blessings of the law are given to us in Christ. So we that's why it's not yes and no, it's yes and amen. So to get back, no matter how many promises you read about in the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, they are all yes and amen. It's not yes and no, it's yes and amen. And you can take hold of them today. And I encourage you to take verses like this, like the Psalms, especially the Psalms. Stop reading them conditionally. And start reading them as for being fulfilled for you in Christ. Appropriate them into the personal. And it's a very good thing to sit down and do that. To meditate on the Psalms and, and, and to say, I appropriate these promises for me now as fulfilled in Christ. And you will see as you declare that, by the way, Part of praying is making decoration into the heavenly realms. The heavenly realms are around you. There's, there's the heavenly realms around us. By the way, it says Satan is the prince of the air around us. So he lives in the air. Don't ask me how, but he does. He's a spirit. The word spirit is pneuma, it's breath or air. Satan lives in the air around us. And when we make decorations into the air, sound waves travel in the air. And they disrupt the air. It like vibrates the air. So when I when I pray in tongues, I, I'm moving the air and I'm telling you, disrupt Satan's sin, uh, kingdom. Demons hate it. I've had it where I've prayed in tongues and I've had people who are demonized like start screaming. People sometimes when they watch my videos, there's a, there's a testimony of a psychic who we led to the Lord, a, a very prominent South African psychic. And she says that when people are listening to, when she's playing my videos, a demon starts screaming and manifesting. <laughs> it's, you see, what we speak out, the word is in us, the word, the living God is in us, Jesus Christ in us, the hope of glory. And when we speak it out, it's powerful into the heavenly realms. So, <laughs> take the promises of God. Read them as if they're yours now for today. They are in Christ. That's what he earned for you on the cross.
Every blessing is yes and amen in Christ. Be blessed. If you like this video, as usual, I want to ask you to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button, lower right-hand corner. Share it with your friends. Let's get the word out there. We want to glorify Jesus in all we do. I want this, this uh, video, this YouTube channel to glorify Jesus, to bring the sons of God into the full understanding. Sons and daughters of God, obviously. That's, that's a legal term. It's not a sex, sexist term. It's a gender term. It means if you're a son of God, you whether male or female, you inherit with Christ. I want to bring the sons and daughters of God into their full inheritance and understanding of the finished work of the cross. It is good news. It is glorious news. It is joyful news. <laughs> so get this out there and share it. I'm also going to be sharing in the next couple of days on the peace of God. You know, one of the names of God, God or one of the tributes of God. He is a God of peace. And when, when we come into these difficult times where there's affliction, we need peace. So I look forward to seeing you and hearing from you. Please comment below and share this video. Amen.